31, welcome to section 5.7. This is going to seem a little bit like section 3.7 because we're doing plenty of the same types of problems that we saw in 3.7. We're just taking them a little bit further and working with slightly more difficult functions, but we're still gonna look at inverse functions. All right, and we're specifically gonna look at inverses having to do with radical functions. So we're gonna find the inverse of an invertible polynomial function. When I say invertible, it literally means that the inverse exists. Because if you remember from section 3.1, there's this hierarchy. Every set of ordered pairs is a relation. Certain relations are functions, and certain functions are one-to-one -one functions. And the functions that are one-to-one, -one, we get this extra property that the inverse function exists. And when the inverse function exists, we say a function is invertible. So there's relations, and again, all relations, or all ordered pairs are relations, but certain relations are functions. And to go from here to here, that's when you have to pass the vertical line test. Now, for functions, not all of them are one-to-one. -one. Certain functions are one-to-one -one if they pass the horizontal line test. So if those graphs can pass both the vertical and horizontal line test, we say they're one-to-one, -one, so the inverse function exists, and that's what it means to be an invertible function. And we, we talked about this second outcome in section 3.7 as well. There are times when we have to restrict the domain of certain functions to be able to invert those functions, to find the inverse of a polynomial. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more in this section also. So if I wanted to verify that two functions are inverses to one another, what I would need to do is compose them in either direction. So I need to do g of f of x and f of g of x. And if both of those pop out x, if I put in x and I get back out x on both directions, not just one, but both, then I would say f and g are inverse functions of one another. So we're going to practice that in example one. I gave you two functions, and I specifically called them f and f inverse, and I'm gonna task us with showing, with verifying, that these are in fact inverse functions to one another. Well, if I wanna do that, I have to check both directions of composition. So I need to check f of f inverse of x. Is that equal to x? If it is, great. I still need to check it the other way. I would need to check that f inverse of f of x was also equal to x. Now, back in section 3.7, this was the first type of problem we did in that section as well. And if you're not recalling, I'll just write it here, section 3.7. And in section 3.7, the two functions I gave you were not inverse functions of one another. And we saw that when we did f of g of x and it failed on the first one. I, I went through and did g of f of x just to show it to you, but if it fails on one, we don't even have to check the, the other direction. But if this, if this composition is equal to x, I still need to check this one. It's not automatic that they will both be, um, that both compositions put you back on x. So, so let's try this. So let's try f of f inverse of x. So I'm gonna put f inverse of x in here first. So this will be f of 3x minus 5, right? I want to know if that's equal to x. So let's find out. Now I'm going to erase this question mark, and I'm just going to put some work down here. I want to see, hey, is this thing equal to x, all right? So I'm putting in 3x minus 5 right here. That's what the function tells me to do. So I'm going to go 3x minus 5. I need to add 5 to it and divide by 3 because that was the function, the original function. Whatever was in your parentheses, add 5 to it, divide by 3. So if 3x minus 5 is in my parentheses, I will add 5 to it and divide by 3. And I can see that I can simplify the numerator. So this is becoming 3x over 3, and that is, in fact, equal to x. So one direction of the composition is working. And since it is, I'm not going to stop my problem. I need to move forward and see if the other direction works as well. So let's try f inverse of f of x. Now f of x was x plus 5 over 3. All right, again, I want to see is that equal to x. So I will just put my equals to x down here, see if equality holds. And let's test this out. All right, for the inverse, f inverse, it says whatever's in the parentheses, multiply it by 3 and subtract 5. 
So I'm going to take this expression, it was in the parentheses, I'm going to multiply it by 3 and subtract 5. Now when I multiply this fraction by 3, the 3 in the, the numerator and denominator are going to cancel out, so I get x plus 5 minus 5, and sure enough, that is equal to x. So because I was able to check composition in both directions, right? I did f of f inverse, and then I did f inverse of f. Whenever I put in x, I got x back out. That meets the definition of two functions being inverses of one another. So I could say, therefore, f, oops, let me write lowercase f, f and f inverse are inverses of one another. Okay, so I have verified that. Fantastic. All right, so with that, we're gonna move on to me not so much giving you the two functions and you verifying whether they are inverses or not, but I'm going to give you a function, like maybe I'll only give you f of x, and now I want you to come up with the equation for f inverse. All right, I will see you in a bit, bye.